Good morning. Please stand as we go through our call to worship this morning. You'll see the words on the screen, and you can read along with me from Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 through 18. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors, the Euphrates River, and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors serve the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land that you are living. Serve the Lord. And then the people will answer, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It is the Lord our God Himself who brought us and our parents out of Egypt, from that land of slavery, and performed those great signs before your eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which He traveled. And the Lord drove us before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord, because he is our God. Let's pray. Father, we too will serve you. Father, we pray that we will be found faithful. We come to you this morning in worship and praise and adoration. We ask that your spirit would enlighten us, would open our hearts and our minds to what you would have us to receive. And Father, we will lift up our voices, we will lift up our prayers, our petitions, our cries for help, as well as our joyous celebrations, Father, and we just ask that you would hear our prayers. Again, move this morning with your spirit, and may this worship be honoring and pleasing to you. We ask this in the name of your Son. Amen. Well, it's a morning in our what? To morning? I just totally made up a new word. Let's try that again. This morning, that's like tomorrow and this morning together. This morning, our focus in our, our uh, What Christians Believe series is on the church, um, but I think without a focus on who God is, uh, the church is really nothing more than a place to come hang out on Sundays or a social club that does nice things, um, but with, with the right focus on God and his power that works through us, the church can be an unstoppable force for the kingdom. So we're going to use this song, Our God, to focus us this morning on who we serve as a, as a collective church. Um, so sing together with us. Awesome and power, our God, our 
our God. And if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Then what could stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Then what could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Let's meet and greet each other.
Well, good morning. Welcome to Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church. A little bit uh, better attendance here this morning than last week. We did a nice job last week, but it was a little bit cold and chilly. And I know that some of you have had to dig out, but uh, it's great to see you all this morning and welcome. If you're a regular attender here, make sure you look around you. If there's someone that you don't know before the end of the service, make sure you introduce yourself and find out who they are. Uh, again, welcome. If you are visiting with us, please fill out one of the cards in the pew rack in front of you. Drop it in the offering plate as it comes by later this morning. And Jerry, you have a few announcements for us here. And guys, could you put up? There you go. On top of things. Thank you. Uh, a couple of quick announcements from the children's department. First of all, the Pinewood Derby is rapidly approaching. You have two weeks if you haven't been working on your cars, kids. And dads, please remember you are the assistant in this project. Kids are to take the lead on this. Kids rule the design. Dads, you just step in and make sure they don't cut off their fingers. Um, but we are published, um, we are talking this morning about the Pinewood Derby Bake Sale. Every year we have a bake sale where we raise money for the elementary scholarship program for camp. And so we're asking you to be generous with donating your baked goods. Um, there will be sign-ups floating around through your ABF classes this morning, and there's also one at the information desk. We would ask that you sign up today so that we know how many people are going to be able to donate. All of your baked goods need to be individually wrapped and ready to sell, and we would love for them to be dropped off the day before, which is Friday, the date is on the board, uh, by 5 o'clock so that we can get everything set up and have it ready to go. Okay, next slide. The new Sunday school quarter starts next week. Um, our children's Sunday school teachers have done an excellent job working their way through Ezra and Nehemiah and Esther this quarter. Next quarter, we start the daunting task of teaching kids about the minor prophets. So this is going to be an exciting quarter, challenging, of course. Um, I think it's great that our kids are going to be experiencing a part of the Bible that maybe not many adults even take the time to read through. So I, I would ask, first of all, that you be praying for your kids' Sunday school teachers. Uh, it is not an easy job to teach these books of the Bible to preschoolers. So please be praying for your kids' Sunday school teachers. I would also ask that your family um, pick up a reading plan. There's a reading plans um, out on the information desk. It will also be updated if you're using your mobile app, the Explore the Bible mobile app. That will update this week to the new curriculum for the new quarter. Um, there are take-home papers that come home every week. Your teachers do an excellent job of teaching in the classroom, but we would love to have families follow up on that at home, especially with some of this content that isn't real familiar. So please be looking for those papers that your kids bring home every week. Talk to them about it. Um, read through the section of the Bible that your kids are um, studying in class. Make sure you answer their questions that they have. Uh, we will be pausing on this for a little bit over Easter and studying the book of Luke so that your kids will have Easter lessons um, there at the beginning of April. But please be um, paying attention to what your kids are learning and really encouraging their teachers as well. Okay, third announcement. Next month in March is the annual Wood Project for the Boys Club, the MIT Boys Club. And there are two dates on the board. Um, the first one will be for third, fourth, and fifth graders. The second one is for first and second graders. This year, I believe they're putting together a step stool project, and it's going to require um, power drills and screwing pieces of wood together. So dads, we would love for you to come with your boys on the nights that are listed on the board. We would love that if you would come and help. Um, if you're a grandpa, if you're an uncle, if you're an older gentleman that just likes to work with wood and loves to assemble, um, we would love to have your help. Of course, with the new security guidelines, we would also love for you to come to the trainings coming up and make sure that you've got your background checks done as well. But we would really love to have you come and help the boys. Um, this is a really fun night. This is something that they remember every year and look forward to, and it takes a lot of men to make this project really work well. So if you have questions, please see Phil Culp. He's taking the lead on this. Uh, make sure you mark down those two dates if you're a dad, and please plan to come if you can. And last but not least, coming up this week are two security meetings. Um, back on the wooden table, not the information desk, but the table next to it, there are pages that look like this. And what I would ask is if you are coming to the meeting either Monday night this week or on Saturday, that you pick up one of these before you leave today. In this packet is just some basic directions. And then the second and third page would be the paperwork that you're going to need to fill out to allow us to do background checks. And some of it takes a little bit of time. Um, so instead of sitting at the meeting trying to remember all the details and filling that out, 
take it home, fill it out ahead of time, and bring it back with you when you come to the meeting. The meetings, it's an either or. You can either come Monday night from 7 to 8, or you can come on Saturday morning from 9 to 10. Our youth group is providing child care. Um, these meetings are not appropriate to have kids sitting in on. So we're going to ask all the kids to go upstairs. And youth, I put the sign-up sheets for you in your Sunday school classes. Please remember when you signed up to come and help. Um, the kids will be taken care of upstairs in the nursery department. Even older kids up to fifth grade can come and um, hang out with the youth kids. We would really ask that you come to one or the other. If you've never been in a mandated reporter training or if you haven't completed your background checks, if you have gone through a mandated reporter training or if you do have your background checks already done, just turn that paperwork into us and you don't need to be at these meetings. But it's really important that we get as many people done as possible um, as quickly as we can. So we would really ask that you plan to come to one or the other, if at all possible, this week. And if you have any questions, please come and see me. Thank you. Terrific. Thanks, Jerry. A lot going on in children's ministry, so make sure that you check your bulletin. Continue to read through that, or the bulletin is also on the church website, so you can find out a lot of information there if you missed anything this morning. Sunday, March 29th, you want to mark that on your calendar, we'll celebrate spring communion. The communion service will follow our Sunday morning service that day. There will be no Sunday school or adult Bible fellowship classes. Also, Grace Fellowship out of Lamersville, Grace Brethren Church in Lamersville, they'll be providing child care for us that Sunday morning. They do that so that our children's workers can participate in communion. But in the flip side, we also provide for them that evening, the same day, Sunday evening, we provide child care services for them. So if you are interested in doing that or helping, please contact Jerry or call Rachel at the church office. Sunday, uh, April 12th, we'll have a baby child dedication service. Anyone wishing to dedicate their child uh, or baby, uh, please contact Rachel over in the church office as well. One important youth announcement. There are several in the center of your bulletin there if you want to take a look at those, but one that involves this week is there will be an extended hangout session. I don't know exactly what a hangout session is, except you hang out, just kind of are there, hanging out, that sort of thing, okay? Normally, youth would run from 7 to 8, but there's going to be an additional hangout from 8 till 9, so parents, if you're going to allow your young adults, to uh, your youth, to stay for the hangout, you'll pick them up at 9. If not, you'll pick them up at 8 o'clock. So you'll know what, uh, what times to pick them up this Wednesday. Um, let me see. Items for the Spring Street. The Spring Street house over here is going to be raised, is going to be torn down, and we're going to add additional parking over there. There are some items in there that you may be interested in purchasing. There's a list of those items at the information desk, so you can look through those. If you have any questions about those items or concerns or of interest in them, please contact Shirley at the church office, and she can give you more information. Uh, there are many other announcements in your bulletin. One of importance, the Precious Life Banquet information is in your bulletin, so you'll want to refer to that as well as others. In addition, <clears throat> this Tuesday, Rick Wolf will be here on a fact-finding mission. That is, um, Rick is coming uh, uh, for like an interview with us as a potential future candidate as a youth pastor. He's coming here to get to know Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church, we're also going to take that time to get to know he and his wife, Jill, and their two children. And so they will be arriving Tuesday and staying through Thursday around lunchtime. And so we're just kind of interacting and talking through the process, getting to know each other to see if God may have a fit there for Rick and his family here at Martinsburg. I believe that's it by the way of announcements. Uh, gentlemen, if you'll come forward. Uh, just as a reminder, as we started last week, uh, following the um, offertory prayer when the men are taking the offering, please remain seated until Ryan gives you an indication to go ahead and stand for the praise and worship. Uh, we do have some difficulty getting the plates through in the balcony when people are standing, so if you just stay seated until Ryan gives a, the back row. The back row of the balcony. Ryan is requesting that you signal him. How would you like that? Just them to stand? Okay, so once the plates have gone through in the balcony, if the back row would stand, Garth, you kind of coordinate that up there, all right? Back row will stand, and that'll tell Ryan that it's gone through, and then he'll give you the signal, and we can all coordinate, kind of like synchronized standing here, I guess. Let, let, let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for the opportunity to gather together here in this building. But this building, uh, Father, just reflects the structure. The church is made up of its people and empowered by your spirit. So, Father, we uh, worship you this morning, and we worship by giving back to you a portion of what you have so graciously given to us. We are blessed. You have certainly blessed this church, blessed this country, and blessed our community. We do not want to take that for granted, Father. And so this morning, we give back to you what you have given to us in worship to you. In thy name we pray. Amen. challenge and that's our mission to go out and be the church Um, so as we sing this next song build your kingdom here let's ask God to continue to build his kingdom here on earth and here at MGBC Um, so as soon as I believe the plates made it to the back there's Garth hey we can stand and let's sing together build your kingdom here let the darkness fear show your mighty hand Heal our streets and land Set your church on fire Win this nation back Change the atmosphere Build your kingdom here We pray Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church, we need your power in us. We seek your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, we refuse to waste our lives, for you're a joy. We 
Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom. kingdom's power, reaching the near and far, no force of hell can stop, your beauty changing hearts, you made us for much more than this, awake the kingdom seed in us, fill us with the strength and love of Christ. are your church and we are the hope on earth build your kingdom in let the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on fire win this nation back change the atmosphere build your kingdom here we pray build your kingdom here let the darkness Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land, set your church on fire, win this nation back, change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here, we pray. Precious cornerstone, the sure foundation. You are faithful to the end, and we are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe your own. Precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. You are faithful to the end. We are waiting on you, Jesus. We believe your all to us. Let the glory. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe your all to us. Only 
Son of God sent from heaven hope and mercy at the cross you are everything you're the promise Jesus and you are all to us so let the glory of your name the passion of the church let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives we believe that you're all to us and you're all and you're all to us and you're
sacrifice. your mercy I lay my body down a living sacrifice to you I pray it's acceptable purest kind of worship this is what you're calling so I won't conform to the ways of this world that distract me from your will. Lord, come transform my will to yours, so good and pleasing and perfect. As our bodies have many parts, no part greater than another. But we are your body, we belong to each other. And in your great grace, you've given us things, gifts to be used only for you. won't conform to the ways of this world that distract us from your will. Lord, come transform our will to yours, so good and pleasing and perfect. Lord, renovate our hearts, renovate our lives. We lay our bodies down. Sacrifice, Lord, renovate our hearts, renovate our lives. We lay our bodies down as a living sacrifice. Let us love one another and hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is true. Never be lazy while working to serve you. Rejoice in our confident hope. Give us patience in trials as we constantly pray to you and care for those in need. We'll show empathy, humility as we live in harmony and overcome evil with good. Lord, renovate our hearts. And renovate our lives. We lay our bodies down as a living sacrifice. Lord, renovate our hearts. And renovate our lives. We lay our bodies down as a living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice. Father, this is your church. You are the head. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it, Father. You've empowered us and given us spiritual gifts of which to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. I pray that we are found worthy. Shape us, mold us, change us this morning, Father. My desire is to speak truth. My desire is to speak your word. Empower me and empower through your spirit that we are attentive to your word. 
We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Children, you are dismissed out this door over here on my left, right over here. Bear with me a little bit this morning. Ryan has continued to drag me into the computer age, and you can see now I have my notes, Bible, iPad up here, and I will be turning the slides from up here, so if I mess up, you guys take over up there, so just bear with me if the wrong slide's up there. Hopefully, I can keep it um, moving forward. What Christians believe. We've been looking at several aspects of our statement of faith as to what Christians believe. Over the past several weeks, we've been studying this, and it's important because what we believe determines how we see our world, and how we see our world impacts how we make decisions and how we interact with other people. So knowing what you believe as a follower of Jesus Christ, as a Christian, is vitally important. We've looked at the Trinity. We've looked at the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three persons, yet one God. Pastor Brandt gave us an excellent reminder of the inspiration and the power of the Bible and of Scripture and its importance and its role in our lives as followers of Jesus Christ. And he reminded us how imperative it is that we spend time reading His Word. We looked at humanity. We ask ourselves the question, why did God create us in the first place? What does it mean and what is our responsibility that we're created in the very image of God? We concluded our study that although we understand that we're created in the image of God, sin has marred or distorted that image. We are not as God intended us to be because of sin. And so we followed up last week with salvation, and perhaps some of you had an opportunity, if you weren't here, to watch it live or to stream the sermon last week. We studied and looked at salvation. We saw that God has a plan to restore the image, and that plan culminated in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the focal point of all of history, the pinnacle of history in this one event in which he covered the sin of the world. Today, we turn our attention to the church. The church plays a vital role in God's plan. He has a plan in place, but the church plays an important part in that. Most of the time, when we hear the word church, we think of a building, or individuals think of a structure, or maybe not so much a structure, but a gathering together of a group of individuals with a like perspective on religion or spirituality. But if we just see the church in light of that, we become way too exclusive. We begin to look at just the local impact of a church, its surrounding community. Are we not somehow connected to our brothers and sisters in Asia, Europe, and around the world? Is the work of the church limited to just a geographic location around this building? So we must consider what we call the universal church. The universal church. All individuals that put their trust in Jesus Christ and have become disciples of him, that is, they have followed the plan of salvation that we talked about last week and received the Holy Spirit and given been given specific giftedness and are unified together into the body of christ make up the universal or sometimes called the global church to simplify it think of it this way most of you here this morning are americans you're americans because your mother gave birth to you in the borders of the united states of america i was born in new york That makes me an American, just so you're sure, okay? No matter what state you are born in, in this world, you are an American. If you are born in the United States, you are automatically an American. When you become a follower of Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Spirit, you become a member of the universal church by your birth of the Holy Spirit. You are now a member of that universal church. 
Likewise, when you're born into this country, you become an American citizen. That citizenship avails you to certain rights as well as responsibilities. So does your association with the universal church. Very good. All right. Two of the most frequently used pictures of the church in the New Testament are the bride of Christ and the body of Christ. Interestingly, each of these pictures presents a valuable perspective of the church and our relationship with God. Now, before I continue, I want you to kind of understand how this sermon is going to flow here. We're going to look at the universal church, and we're going to get the local church, and then the pivotal point is the last few minutes in which I speak a message directly to each one of us, because we individually have a vital part to play in God's plan through the local church. So two of the most frequently used pictures, the Bride of Christ in Ephesians 5. Think of this as a vertical connection. It pictures God's great love for the church, like a husband and his wife. The imagery also indicates that despite the bride or the church's unfaithfulness, God, the husband, the groom, will always be faithful to his bride. It also points us to the promise that one day the groom will return for his bride, the church, and will take us to be with him. This is uh, very closely associated with the Jewish concept of marriage in which the groom would one day make his preparations in his home and then come suddenly for his bride. And the wedding would begin and he would then take his bride back to the home that he had prepared for her. Faced with great pressures to conform in this world, Paul wrote a letter to the Corinthian church and he called them to deeds of righteousness and purity because they were betrothed or to be the bride of Christ. So righteousness and purity are marks of this universal church under this picture of the church being the bride of Christ. But we also see pictured the body of Christ. It's more of a horizontal picture. The church in a connection with God is vertical. But now we see the body of Christ. It gives us a horizontal picture or horizontal perspective. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. If you're using Pew Bible, 634, 634. Ephesians chapter 1. We'll be looking at verse 22 and 23. Again, 634. So we see the church, the universal church, pictured as the bride of Christ. And we also see the universal church pictured as the body of Christ. It says in uh, verse 22, And God placed all things under his feet, Christ, and appointed him, Christ, to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Christ is the head of the church. The church is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. The church is the body of Christ. Notice that the passage says that he will fill this body. What does that mean? How and what does he plan to fill the church with? Well, he plans to bless the church, to cause it to flourish, to empower it, and to provide it with giftedness. As we said, believers that comprise the church are filled with the Spirit at the moment of salvation. We talked about that last week. This filling provides us with unique spiritual giftedness. And everyone in here that is a follower of Jesus Christ, that has given their life to Christ, has been gifted with a spiritual gift. Uh, These gifts, though, mind you, are not to be kept for oneself. Those giftedness, those gifts are given to us in order to extend to others to share with others, to love one another. This is important because someone, for example, that has had an accident or a disease in which they are unable to move the limbs of their body, they're suffering from a sort of paralysis. They can still generate thoughts of movement, but they're unable to do so. You see, Christ is the head of the church, He's the brain. He's the thought generator. He has called us, the universal church, to be the body, 
to be his hands and feet. So while Christ is certainly able to do whatever he chooses to do with or without us, he chooses to generate the work through us. He chooses to give us the thought process and for us to go out and to be the hands and feet of Jesus. He chooses to work through you and I. Flip over a couple pages, pages to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. We've discussed this passage before. This passage outlines the purpose of the universal church, the body of Christ. Starting in verse 11. It was he, Christ, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. For what purpose? To prepare God's people, you and me, for works of service, so that the body of Christ, the church, may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Gifts are to be used to build up. The common word in Scripture is edify, to support, to uplift others, to reach out to others. The passage also tells us that as we do this, we become more unified. And as a result of that, the passage says that it results in maturity, growth, and unification. We come together. When we function as a church and express our spiritual gifts one to each other, we become unified and we grow in maturity. Perhaps as you're reading this, two things popped into your mind. First, maybe you're thinking... I'm just one Christian in this huge, universal, mega church. Does it really matter? Does my contribution to the Christian cause provide any benefit? Yes. Yes, it does. You ever hear of the phrase, um, think globally, act locally? Have you seen it on a bumper sticker? Think globally, act locally. Normally it's in association with an environmentalist cause or green cause or something along those lines. Um, in Claire de Graff's book, The Ten Second Rule, Following Jesus Made Simple, he says, we can live out Jesus Christ locally in front of the people we live with and meet every day consistently enough to change the world around us. How? How do we change the world around us? Well, we do that through the local church. While the word for church is used 119 times in the New Testament, 104 of those are referring to the local church. The local church can be defined as a local body of professed Christian believers who are associated together in a biblical pattern of organization for the goal of building each other up, there's that word, edification, we saw it in Ephesians 4, and meeting the Great Commission, evangelism, Matthew 28, and fulfilling the biblical outline of local church function. You see, the local church is a group of believers baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. It is a people that have received salvation, they have accepted and believed in Christ, part in the plan of God's redemptive process, of what Christ did on the cross and his resurrection. Jesus Christ is our head. It is important to realize that the Grace Brethren Fellowship is not a denomination. I'm going to say that again, and I want you all to go, oh, okay? It is important to realize that the Grace Brethren Fellowship is not a denomination. Did, did you know that? Because oftentimes you are asked the question, what is a grace brethren? And you'll begin by explaining, well, we're similar to the Baptists and similar to the Lutheran. No. We're a fellowship. We rely on the Holy Spirit as the leader of our church. We rely on the Holy Spirit through pastors and elders and church board. Our pastors are not appointed by a board or district or bishop. We alone, as the local church, are responsible with the guidance of the Holy Spirit to complete and search for and confirm the person for the position of pastor or pastors. 
Our pastors are not appointed by a regional team or a committee. The local church leadership here determines our budget, who we spend the money on, the missionaries that we support, the programs that we maintain, the programs we eliminate, how we conduct our worship. All of this is determined locally. No one appoints for us what we are to do. No one hands down sermon notes to me or to any of the Grace Brethren pastors and tells them, this is what you are to preach this week. We determine that. The elders and myself get together to determine the topics that we talk about and we share. Now, the fellowship is like a good friend. The Grace Brethren Fellowship. We can go to them for guidance, for assistance, to consult with them. We can ask them for insight or have them share their experiences. But in the end, ultimately and finally, the decision with respect to Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church and a Grace Brethren Church rests upon that church alone. No one oversees us and tells us what we must or are to do. That's why your role is so important. Because you are all a part of this local body. And so, therefore, your involvement helps us to determine the direction for this church. The local church comes together under a biblical pattern of organization, the definition said. That is, that the group or the church submits to spiritual leadership. The biblical pattern of organization that we see in Scripture is that there are pastors, myself as one, I am responsible to shepherd this congregation, to teach, to guard, to lead, to equip. And most importantly, in my opinion, it's to set an example, to strive to live out what I'm sharing with you each Sunday morning. And please, I will fail at times, but I will do my best, and a pastor does his best to shepherd and to set an example for the congregation. Elders, there are men chosen because of their character and their spiritual maturity to come alongside the pastor to provide spiritual leadership to the congregation. Many times, the men that open our service with a call to worship, those are the elders that you have selected and that God has appointed to lead this church. Deacons, deacons are another position that we have within the church. Essentially, they're the same as an elder, except that they do not have the giftedness of teaching. These are men and women that God has called and made them responsible to carry out the work of the church. We see this in Acts chapter 6, verse 4. Um, The story goes something like this. There were some widows there that were not being uh, kept in the loop and not being fed and given the food that the church had in order to support these widows. And they came to the church with this complaint. We're being missed. We're being overlooked. And the elders bring the church together and they say, appoint seven men, seven deacons in order to take care of this. Well, here's what the passage says. We will turn this responsibility, the feeding of these women, over to them, deacons, and will give our attention to prayer and ministry of the word. Our deacons here at Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church, they help with communion service, baptismal service, meal preparation, as well as visitation of the sick. It's interesting, Matthew 16, 18, it's on the cover of your bulletin there if you haven't noticed it. Jesus says, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. His point, the church is founded upon Jesus Christ and he alone. The church will be powerful. The church will express its power, though, through the individuals that comprise it. The biblical pattern of leadership within the church is intended for the church to carry out two main purposes. Two main purposes of the local church. Edification, building up, and supporting one another. The goal of the church, as we saw in Ephesians 4, is sharing those gifts, those gifts that we are given, to disciple one another, to lead one another, and to build each other up in support. We do that here on a Sunday morning. We regularly gather together. We have a Sunday morning worship. We have adult Bible fellowship and Sunday school classes. Many of you came to a packed Memorial Park Friday night for the skate, bowling, pie, ice cream extravaganza. We have social functions that we get together. And then we also have small groups and discipleship groups and Bible studies. 
Another way that we build each other up is through the celebration of our ordinances. Threefold communion. We wash feet. We get together and share bread and cup and a fellowship meal. We're celebrating together, common community together, things that we have in common. And we're celebrating a common relationship achieved through the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ. We celebrate baptism. We'll do that again here the last Sunday in April. We'll have a baptismal service. And we hope that you invite family and friends if you're being baptized because we want to celebrate together with you and, and, and know who you are to help you and build you up. We do it publicly so that we can come alongside you as individuals so that you can grow in your faith and you publicly demonstrate your faith in Jesus Christ through baptism. You may have noticed over the past several months that we have a lot of new faces here at Martinsburg Grace Brethren Church. I must tell you, I've been in contact with a variety of people, many people, and the comment that keeps coming back to me is your friendliness, how comfortable you made those new visitors feel. When people came in, you expressed interest in them and you connected with them and introduced yourself and you remembered their name from week to week. You're doing an outstanding job of connecting with those people. You're reaching out to them and getting to know them and providing them with encouragement. That's what this passage is telling us to do, to edify and build each other up. Make sure you get to know those new faces. Spend time with them. Don't be so quick on a Sunday morning to slide out the side door. Find someone that you don't know or that looks like they're new or, uh, or haven't been here and make sure that you walk up to them and say hi to them. One of the goals that Pastor Tim and I are working on now, even as I connect with him on a week-to-week -week basis, even though he's in California, is how we um, shrink the church down. That is, how we make smaller units of community together so that we connect and be most effective. You see, people will ask me all the time, is your church growing? And the answer is, I don't really know. I mean, I can certainly show numerical growth on a Sunday morning but the real goal is spiritual growth. Spiritual growth is what we're after. That's what we're looking for. And how do we achieve that? With 500 people here, we have to have smaller entities, smaller communities to provide that spiritual growth. The second purpose, and equally important, the first is to edify, to build up, to grow. The second purpose is to evangelize. Evangelism is a process whereby the message of salvation is communicated to those outside the church, the lost, the unchurched, the unbeliever. And Jesus calls us all to this process in Matthew chapter 28. One way that we do this is we come alongside other Grace Brethren churches. We have a West Penn district in which we interact together as a church with them. The pastors of these churches meet each month and we share common difficulties in sharing the faith and reaching out to others and we work together in order to do that. We also do this by associating ourselves with denominations here in Martinsburg. We have a Martinsburg church ministerium. And by the way, Ryan and I are co, what do we call that? Co-leaders of the ministerium. Co, we were, I, I brought you into it too. Yeah, you're, 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 you're in it too. We're co-chairs of the Martinsburg Ministerium. Our goal is to work together with those churches in this area because we have a common goal, is to share Jesus Christ. So we work with those. But you have to understand, it was never intended for evangelism to be done by the pastors and leadership of the church only. It was never intended to be that way. All of us are followers of Jesus Christ. All of us have been given gifts that we are to utilize. And when Christ descended and he said to go and baptize all nations, he was talking to all of his followers. As I said, it's a process. The process may begin as simply as shoveling your neighbor's driveway, taking them a meal, transporting someone to a hospital appointment, watching their house while they're away, the process of connecting, being the hands and feet of Jesus, looking for those opportunities. That process will eventually lead to a conversation about who Jesus Christ is. And maybe you'll have that conversation with them, but maybe it'll be somebody else. It's a process. The important thing is, are you and I taking our part 
in the process of sharing Jesus Christ. So, the local church, followers of Jesus Christ, are here to fulfill two primary goals. The first, edification. The building up of the believers to serve others, encouraging one another, supporting one another. The local church, the goal of the local church is to support and train you and provide you with encouragement and empowering you so that you can complete the second part of the mission, evangelism. Sharing our faith in Jesus Christ. Sharing our faith with those outside of salvation. Yeah, this is a big part that plays in God's kingdom. We are trained within the local church, and then we go to reach out to others for Jesus Christ. To live lives and speak words that will draw others to Him. The last passage of Scripture I want us to look at is Romans chapter 10. Turn there if you would with me. Romans chapter 10. You may recall we looked at this passage last week. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It's interesting. The first part of this passage of Scripture talks about salvation, confessing Jesus publicly, trusting in His promises. But what's interesting is on or about verse 12 or so, 11, 12, and 13, the tone changes, the perspective changes, and it moves from salvation to oneself to reaching out to others. Let me read it to you, starting in verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is, here it goes, no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now notice verse 14 and 15. How then can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. We must be careful. We must always remember that the local church, this church, must never become inward focused at the exclusion of evangelizing and sharing our faith with others. We are called to share our faith in Jesus Christ with a lost world. We must also always be looking for ways to share and interact with others. We are strengthened in here. We are encouraged in here. We are trained in here for the purpose of taking Christ out there.
Please stand as we sing. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation. We believe, we believe in this broken generation. When all is dark, you help us see. There is only one salvation. We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father, we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. We believe. follower of Jesus Christ, you are a member of the universal church. And with that comes the responsibility and the giftedness that the Holy Spirit has given you power to do His will. Each and every one of us will be called this week to encourage, edify, and build up someone. Each and every one of us this week will be called upon somehow to share the love of Jesus Christ, to be the hands and feet of Christ. May we be found worthy as his church. Father, bless us with the power and the strength, the boldness to carry out what you've called us to do. This is not something that is ordained for others or gifted to others. You have called all of us into your body to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, Father, I pray that we are found worthy. 
and that your kingdom grows stronger through our work this week. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.